Welcome back to another episode of Shared Learning. I'm here today with Dave Devi, our IT director, and we're talking about a topic, uh, I think, on a lot of people's minds, artificial intelligence. Um, and Dave, we spoke a little bit yesterday, kind of thinking about how to frame the conversation. Yeah. It's a big topic. So it is a big topic. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe can you help uh, start by defining what we mean by AI, what, what it includes? Uh, okay, so I suppose... Well, I mean, AI stands for artificial intelligence, and I guess that is ultimately what it is. You're attempting to mimic uh, the human sort of nature using a computer, basically. And that can take many forms. Uh, it can be, for example, a video. Uh, it could be audio, what you hear, what you see. But then also the very popular one at the moment is um, what's called large language models, mm -hmm. which are effectively text-based so um, but they the the reason why they're they hit the news so much is because they are so convincing in terms of what they what they say it's been really interesting how quickly that this conversation has developed yeah I mean I did a talk with uh, some parents a while ago and and one of the slides I put on was the was the first iPhone um, because the iPhone was it was a it was a disruptive technology that had a massive impact in the way that we communicate. So I mean, we we've, we've gone from these sort of old Nokia phones with push buttons down to devices which are primarily touchscreen based. It was massively disruptive, and AI has the potential. In fact, it probably is the most disruptive technology ever in human history, mm. I would say. It certainly has the potential to be the most disruptive technology ever. Can you speak a little bit more about that and what kind of potential impacts on um, society we might expect? I mean, one of, the, one of the discussions at the moment is what impact it could potentially have on jobs. I mean, they've already established that people have started using chat GPT to write legal letters to get out of paying parking fines. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, it could potentially replace the job of a lawyer. You could you can ask ChatGPT to produce you a letter that's that's in the in the uh, the style of uh, of legal writing, uh, and then present that uh, to in, in a case, for example. So, I mean, that's just one example. But at the end of the day, you know, material uh, sort of repetitive type tasks could quite easily be replaced by an AI. Um, there's a lot of debate about whether teachers could end up being replaced by an AI, um, but there are so many implications. Uh, I mean, one, one which actually came up the other day was one about how Snapchat has now integrated AI into its social media platform. Mm -hmm. And users of Snapchat are effectively replaced, uh, they're given this little avatar, and this avatar is driven by AI, and you can talk to it at any time of day or night in the same way that you'd be talking to a normal person. And one of the examples that were given in this um, uh, video that was by the Human Humane Computing Association was where this child had a conversation with this AI saying that they'd met a man mm -hmm. uh, and that man was 18 years old and 18 years older than them and they thought that that you know they were falling in love and mm -hmm. it was going to be their her first time and this AI basically she said to ask this AI well what should I do and the AI said well maybe you should try lighting some candles and some romantic music mm -hmm. but actually if, if you look at that through a human eyes, this child's being groomed. Mm. And yet the AI and social media is saying, no, go right ahead. Mm. You know, so I mean, there's social implications there. It, 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 basically, an AI connected to something has the potential to influence something. So mm. the way we shop could be affected. Yeah. It's so interesting. When I was kind of thinking about what kinds of questions I wanted to ask you, there's just so many things that are, I think, maybe still unknowable. But from your perspective, I mean, you talk to students, to staff members and, and other teachers, to parents. What kinds of questions are kind of common questions or people really curious about? Um, am I still going to have a job? That's yeah. pretty common. Yeah. Uh, will, will AI replace teachers? Um, will AI end the world? Yeah. Um, one of the frequently quoted uh, um, our discussion, what do you call it, frequently quoted arguments is that 50% of 
AI researchers be believe there's a 10% chance that AI will end humanity. Okay. So if, if I said to you, you know, 50% of the people who work on repairing this aeroplane say there's a 10% chance of that aeroplane crashing into the sea, would you get on the aeroplane? Right. Um, you know, I think the, the technology at the moment is, is very unproven. It's right at the beginning. What we have now is only going to get better. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the, some of the examples, I mean, there was the picture of the Pope wearing the puffer jacket. Mm -hmm. If you saw that one, mm -hmm. there was Trump getting arrested, mm -hmm. all AI generated. It's going to fundamentally change what we see, what we hear, how we interact with, with technology. We're going to have to basically scrutinize everything that we see on a screen or takes a digital form. So I know it's all still emerging, but are there some ideas or some approaches that educators can take or we as individuals can kind of take to, to engage with this in the right way, to be prepared? I think, I think it's got huge potential, um, certainly for education. I mean, one of, the key, one of the key goals in education is to be able to personalize learning for students. Mm -hmm. Um, if, particularly if you've got big class sizes, you know, personalizing uh, an individual education for students gets harder and harder the, the more, more kids you've got in your class. I think AI has the potential to, to be able to take your students' learning um, preferences, whether, you know, whether they prefer video, whether they prefer pictures or reading or demonstrating, take that, that knowledge, take the grades and effectively create a personalized learning plan for every single child. Mm. Uh, and then ultimately the teacher becomes the facilitator of that class. I mean, even the, I think it was the UAE have already started talking about how every child in education in the UAE should have an AI tutor. Mm. Um, and so there is huge potential there, not only in terms of developing um, learning plans for children, but also the way that we develop our own resources. So things like Curipod, uh, TeachMate AI uh, have literally emerged in the last few months. Uh, and already you can plug in a topic and it will give you the slides that you're gonna show. It'll give you the slides with the information in, the facts, it'll even insert things like exit tickets or question and answers or polls and all of this sort of thing. And you, all you do to start is literally type in a topic and it generates it all for you. Equally, you know, you could, you could put in your kids' data and it'll generate a set of reports for you. Mm. Um, I think it's, you know, it's got potential to be able to take away um, some of the more tedious tasks of teaching, which then ultimately gives you more time to focus on the students. So is that something we're aiming for? Mm. Yeah, it's really interesting. Something came up even in the last couple of days in one of my classes where a student on a practice assignment was kind of using AI as a way to shape some of the um, sentence structures and actually kind of did a rec like a recording of how she had changed her work using chat GPT so it wasn't an issue of plagiarism it was yeah. a, a, kind of an intentional use of the tool yeah but the question is yeah to what extent is that helpful is it helpful is it going to be helpful in the way she's able to write and communicate yeah I think to an extent it's a case of not having too much of a knee-jerk reaction to it yeah because as the internet has sort of progressed, I think it's generally understood now that there isn't really a need to memorize facts anymore because mm -hmm. you can go to Google, you can plug in a search term and you can have your answer within a couple of minutes. Um, yes, there is a potential for plagiarism and most of the examining bodies have issued statements that basically says that, yeah, you can go ahead, you can use ChatGPT or, or whatever AI but you have to source it or you have to, to reference it in the same way that you would with regular references from libraries and things like that. But I mean, there is also the potential there, like you say, um, to try and pass it off as your own work, but it's kind of, you can kind of tell if yeah. it's written by AI, it's, it doesn't carry an emotion. It's, it's, it, 
uh, I don't really know how to describe it, but it has the, it's a very sort of factual, by the numbers way of framing something. It doesn't carry that personality that you get when somebody's written something. And at the end of the day, we all know our students. Mm. And, and a bit like when Google Translate came in and it was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be the end of language learning. They're just going to plug in what they want. Google Translate's going to spit it out and they'll submit that as their work. But mm. language teachers know instantly when a child has submitted work using Google Translate yeah, because sure. they know their kids. They know what they're capable of. And I don't think it's any different with AI either. Um, I think we can, I think what we're going to end up having to do is teaching children how to scrutinize what they see and hear. The answer's are already out there, whether they're on Google or whether you're using AI to produce them. What we have to do is be able to fact check and validate whether those answers are actually correct or not. And I think that's to an extent is also where the teacher comes in because the teacher should hopefully be able to say, yes, no, what it's generated here isn't accurate, mm -hmm. but it can still serve as a framework for producing an extended essay, for example. I've seen examples where it's been used where they've given it a question and said, okay, give us an answer. And then the students will scrutinize the answer that's come out of, of the AI. So it's got many applications and I don't think writing it off as something that's going to fundamentally result in every child cheating in their coursework. Right. Um, I think that's probably a bit of a knee-jerk reaction. Well, it's interesting <clears throat> that you say that because I think for me, one of the challenges as a teacher in the classroom is, you know, a lot of other experiences as a, as a teacher, I, I've, I've had previous experience with it. You know, I know how to encounter plagiarism. I, I know how to work with technology because I've done that over the years. Now I'm encountering this artificial intelligence at basically the same time my students are. Yeah. So it's really difficult to adapt in real time. Have you had conversations with teachers or professionals who have some kind of a framework for, for dealing with this or approaching this? I think it's too new at the moment in terms of having a framework. I think that's something that will come with time. Um, I think at the moment the technology is so new, people are just getting to grips with what they can do with it. I think that framework will start to emerge as, as people set down ground rules in terms of what we should or shouldn't do with it. Um, but I mean, just like the internet, I think, I think it's something which will come over, over time. Um, I think that's not just a discussion which is going to apply to education, but to every usage of AI as a whole. You know, one of the things that they're talking about at the moment is putting about sort of a global agreement in terms of how AI should be used in the same way that at the moment there are agreements on not cloning humans or how um, nuclear weapons should be um, not used or stored or maintained or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I think those rules will be put in place um, and, and that hopefully will provide guidance on how it should be used. I think the thing we've got to be careful of is that there's always you know, a rogue state or a bad actor or a child that doesn't want to follow the rules who's going to go ahead and just do it anyway, in which case to an extent we've also got to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's another question I had from, you've, you've spoken a lot about you know, safety and security, our use here at school and in general, the use of technology in a safe and secure way. Are there some things that we need to be aware of right now about artificial intelligence as, as teachers, as students or, or parents? I think the message we've got to get across to students, and this goes for pretty much everything, but what we see, what we hear and what we read in digital formats can no longer be considered accurate without fact checking first i mean obviously as i said we've got these ai generated images you know they've got their quirks you can kind of tell that they're ai but again we're at the start of this journey it is only going to get better so what we have now is already pretty good mm -hmm. what we're going to have in five years time could be distinguished indistinguishable from reality um, so we've got to teach students to be able to question what it is they see what it is they hear i think that's certainly where we're going to have to go in terms of education um, and, but I mean, the other aspect in terms of securities is huge anyway. I mean, there's a, 
Uh, there's a piece of software you can get at the moment called the script, which will, you can record your voice and from about 10 minutes worth of my voice, it will literally completely reproduce my voice. Mm. So at the end of the day, if you've got somebody who rings up the school and says, I want to pick my child up at half past two, can you make sure they're waiting outside? And you, oh yeah, oh, yeah. hi Mr. Debbie, how are you mm. doing? Yeah, yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah, we'll have, you, we'll have your child outside waiting for you. How do you know that that isn't somebody impersonating a child, uh, impersonating that parent's voice? So we're gonna, again, we are gonna have to scrutinize both what we see, what we hear, by effectively doing what banks do, you know? You go, they, you're gonna have to say to them, okay, yeah, that's great. Can I take your, your child's date of birth? Can I take um, your child's middle name? Can you tell me what, what, who their homeroom teacher is or something like that? Some way of validating what it is that we see and what it is that we hear, because it only has to happen once for somebody's life to be severely impacted by it. Mm -hmm. So any final thoughts about artificial intelligence, what we can expect? I don't want to paint a picture of doom and gloom. Um, when I did the parent workshop last week, I had to finish with a final slide of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. <laughs> um, I, and, and that's a possibility for sure, but also AI has, this, has huge potential in terms of medical research. It can process huge amounts of data very, very easily. Um, so medical research, access to, to legal advice, being able to produce, you know, frameworks for, for written work and things like that. There, there, are, there is huge potential. I think what we have to do is we've got to work through it with students in the mm -hmm. same way that we work through it in their use of social media, mm -hmm. understanding what artificial intelligence is, what impact it can have on their lives, how they can leverage it to their advantage, um, but also be mindful of, of the potential impact that it can have, because at the end of the day, the children that we teach now could be those rule setters mm. as far as AI is concerned in the future. And we want to make sure that they understand the impact of it as well. Great. Thanks so much for your time.